Hello, everybody. This is Cleve Bourbon, or Mark Tyson is my real name. Cleve Bourbon is my uh, pen name, of course. Um, and, of course, I write under the name of Beckett Blaze, but I don't really have anything out for Beckett Blaze yet. I'm working on it. Um, so this is my video on formatting, and I wanted to uh, start from the beginning on the formatting. So I uh, didn't have a book ready. I didn't have one of my uh, fiction books, books ready yet because I'm working on Green Mage Metamorphosis. And I'm only about halfway through with writing it or, you know, probably about three, quarter, three quarters of the way with writing it. And so it's not ready to format. Uh, I thought about going ahead and using it anyway. But then I realized that for a long time, and this kind of has become a writing slash grammar teaching class, I, uh, I have a grammar book that I've been working on for a while. And it was this close from being done. So I Monday, starting Monday. I started working on it very diligently, and uh, I'm ready to format it now. I've gotten to the point where it's done. Now, it's a nonfiction book, so it's going to be a little bit different than fiction, but not that different. It's still going to be – I'm still going to format it basically the same way. Um, I've already got the cover and everything for it and, and ready to go. I just uh, need to finish it. I need to finish the exercises and finish some of the, the stuff. It's the same stuff that you've been – that some of you have been uh, viewing on this channel with my uh, grammar lessons. It's the same – stuff it's just finished out so a lot of the stuff that's gonna be coming up in later videos about grammar is already in this book so i thought well why don't go ahead and finish the book and put it out there and you guys can get it or whatever and if you want and you already have all of it so all my grammar knowledge well not all of it but it's a pretty substantial um book uh grammar book it's everything you need to know grammar wise to be an author or um it's it's and some of it's pretty advanced. I mean, I, I put in the basic grammar and then I put in the advanced grammar as well. So it's a pretty comprehensive uh, grammar guide. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm going to format today. So this video may be in two parts because formatting is not that easy. I mean, it's easy with the program I use, the uh, program uh, or um, app. No, well, app, there's an app or um, what am I trying to say? The uh, software I use. Um, However, uh, I, I tend to do it methodically. So sometimes, well, I do it methodically. I'm a, uh, I'm kind of scatterbrained sometimes. So my method may not make sense to those of you who are really logical because I'm not super logical when I do things. I, I kind of do things as I remember them, uh, which reminds me, if you uh, have a journal or a uh, if you keep like a bullet, bullet journal or something, I have three of them here. I do put down some information in the journal when I'm starting to format because there's some things you'll forget, especially if you're doing a series and you want the series to match and you want uh, your, you know, your front matter and everything to match your second book and third book and so on and so forth. I actually need to change this poster here. That's the old cover. I got a new cover now. But anyway, so I'm going to start working on that. Um, I got it ready. I've checked it, double checked it with the uh, edit file. I've checked it. I've double checked it. I've uh, edited it. I've super edited it. I've gone back over it. I got, went over it with uh, programs. Um, and um, so I'm ready to format it now. So you're going to see my messy desktop here. So just enjoy. Okay, that's the... Uh... All right, so part speech. So the first thing that I do, um, there's actually four ways to to format your, your novels, whether they're non- fiction or fiction. Um, there's probably more than four ways, actually, but there's four ways that I use or have used. Um, the number one thing, of course, is you can source it out. You can you can outsource it. You can use Fiverr. You can use other places. I don't think it's that expensive to, to get someone to professionally format your book, but you don't, nowadays, you don't really have to spend the money on that. You can buy two, one of two programs uh, and you own them forever and you can pretty much format everything. If you're like me and you're crazy with electronics and technology and you have both a Mac and a PC, I have several PCs and, and two Macs. Uh, I actually use both programs, Vellum and Atticus. But um, and I, both, both of them have pros and cons. And sometimes I write with a Microsoft Word. Most of the time I write with Microsoft Word. I've gone to um, Scrivener before and I've used Scrivener quite a bit. And I always tend to go back and fall back on Microsoft Word for some reason. I, I don't really know why, even though um, I have a Microsoft Word 365 um, 
subscription and I actually own my Scrivener. I have Scrivener on PC and Scrivener on Mac both. And I have Scrivener on iOS. So I have it on my uh, iPad as well. So I don't know why I always go back to Microsoft Word, but I do. So first things first, uh, what I want to tell you is um, you can outsource it, of course. You can find those places uh, that will do it. You can find it on Fiverr. You can find uh, a little bit more expensive uh, than that. You can you can basically outsource it like you can outsource your, your covers for your books. And, you, and it depends on what quality you're wanting on how much it's going to cost you, depending on uh, if you want, you know, just basic formatting, it probably won't cost that much. If you want a lot of the fancy pictures and things like that, then it's probably going to cost you more, of course. But you can do all that yourself. So, first of all, I used to a long time ago uh, format in Microsoft Word, but um, I find found it hard back in those days to switch from Microsoft Word into um, PDF files and to actually make it where it would work right in Kindle. Of course, back then, a lot of things in Kindle was the Mobi file instead of the EPUB file. So now Kindle does the EPUB a lot more, so it's probably a lot easier. Actually, it is a lot easier. But I would suggest, let me cancel this out real quick. I would suggest that if you want to know how to Microsoft, how to format in Microsoft Word. Now, she doesn't know I'm doing this, and she I don't know her personally. Uh, I know her from videos just like you do. Um, I just happen to watch a lot of her videos. Um, but this is, uh, you might recognize her. This is Bethany Adizeta. Um, Her formatting guide right here, um, where uh, formatting your novel, she has a whole series on it. Um, and it's from two years ago. Um, she's not, she's a lot better to look at than I am, but <laughs> especially if you want somebody pretty, she's definitely a lot prettier than I am. But the point I'm trying to make here is she, she formats in Word or she did about two years ago. And she uses uh, obviously an Apple computer. So, but you know, it's pretty much the same whether it's Apple or PC. And you can go and look at these just to learn how to format in Word. And uh, so she got, she has it here where she's putting it in front and back matter. Now, her videos is where I learned how in my um, books, um, like I said, it's Bethany Adizeta. If you're not really sure what how to spell her name or anything, let me pop back up here to the top. Uh, it's right there. So you can pause it for a second if you want to get her name down. Um, Bethany Adizeta. Anyway, um, so I'll click off that. Like I said, she had, I do not know her. She does not know me. She has no idea that I probably brought that up, but I'm, you know, pointing you towards her. If you want to, uh, do the Microsoft Word thing, then then I suggest those. She, like, like I was just saying, I kind of got off the track there. Um, she's the one I learned when I'm doing my um, fiction work. She's the one I learned to put the, the cover page where you have the cover page that looks just like the cover in the same font. So you have the cover page and then you open it up and you have the same font as the cover page as your header. Like if it's uh, the Harrowing Path and you open up the Harrowing Path, it's the Harrowing Path again right there. She's the one I learned that from. And then you turn the page, you get the copyright, and you turn the page, and you have uh, a different font where it has the the author's name, the title of the book, the author's name, and the publisher information, and then it starts the book. But I'll, I'll show you all that here in just a moment. Now, I'm going to try to keep this video under 20, 20 to 30 minutes like I normally do. I'm, I don't like to make videos longer than that. So if I start getting towards that um, time period, I'm going to probably make this into two videos, but okay. So first of all, this is Microsoft Word. Uh, I I use the dark view because uh, dark, dark mode because it's a lot easier on my eyes, especially because I write a lot at night. Right now you can see that the sun is coming through my window. That's why I look like Santa Claus, like super white Santa Claus. But anyway, um, it's because I have the window open over here, but uh, well, not open, but the curtains open. And uh, the light's coming through, and uh, it's just fine to to have like a, a bright white screen. But a lot of times I write at night because when it's most peaceful, um, after I do all my teaching in the day or from out school and working on all my uh, whatever I need to work on, and you know the phone sits here sits here and goes off and goes off and goes off, and then about ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night, everybody goes to bed or whatever, and I stay up and I stay up till like two, three, four in the morning. That's one of the reasons why right now you'll have to forgive my appearance because I haven't shaven and I didn't shower today. Uh, luckily, you can't, you know, it's where we're in a screen. But I didn't do that because uh, I worked really hard last night trying to get this finished so I could get this video, at least part one out today, uh, Friday. 
So um, I just kind of just did it. So have <laughs> to forgive me if if I look uh, disheveled or look like uh, I just walked out of, I don't know, my garden or something. But anyway, so enough about that. So let's let's move on to uh, the formatting. So the first thing I do is this is Microsoft Word, obviously. Um, this is what I wrote the book in. Now, I started this book years ago, and then I went in uh, a while back, not not last Monday, but a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago. And I went in and I changed everything. You know, now this is written after I got my degree, so this is not one of those books that I wrote. You know, tried to write just out of high school or something where I had no knowledge about grammar at all. I did actually have a lot of knowledge about grammar at this time, but. Um, this was probably prior to 2017. In 2017, I started teaching exclusively grammar classes, especially online, to uh, a lot of homeschool kids who were already smarter in a lot of ways anyway. Um, when I taught in public school, we really didn't teach grammar per se. We taught English, and we taught you know literature and things like that. But I actually had colleagues that um, did not have English degrees. They had degrees in psychology and when I asked her, this one specific teacher at this one specific school, um, if she knew this and this and this about uh, grammar, and she goes, "I never really learned grammar that well. I just, uh, I just, you know, do books and you know literature and stuff like that." And I was like floored. But you anyway, know, that's another complete another story. So public school, not so much grammar. Um, when I got into uh, teaching online and teaching uh, school kids, you know. Um, homeschool kids, then teachers, I mean, uh, parents sought out teachers who specifically taught grammar. So for several years, and including till now, I have just taught nothing but grammar, uh, basic grammar, advanced grammar, just grammar, grammar, grammar. So I learned uh, a lot because you end up when you, the, 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 um, Research says that when you learn grammar, like from a teacher, you you retain like five to ten percent, something like that, depending on how much effort you put into it. When you teach the subject, you retain like ninety percent of it. So uh, by teaching this for you know almost six years now straight, um, I have learned a lot more, and I can almost recite any any grammar issue that you may have. I can probably recite it to you just by talking to you on the phone or or you just put it in the comments, I can just answer it without even having to look it up or anything because I know it. I just know it. So I went back and I made sure that all this stuff was accurate. And so last Monday, I went into this uh, book and I went and I made sure that every aspect of it was uh, correct and up to par. Uh, I read it. I did it line by line, word by word, um, corrected a little bit of it. Um I think the last time I looked at this book and, and really worked on it hard was just about a year ago. So I, you know, I'd, I'd already had several years of grammar before I even really started this book and, and you know, before I got serious about this book. So uh, it wasn't that hard. It took me about five days, Monday through this is, uh, well, four days until Thursday to actually do all this. And then today, this morning, I actually uh, was working on some of the exercises to make sure they all, uh, all the the uh, answers matched and that they were correct. And um, every once in a while, there was a, a question that didn't kind of quite match the the lesson. And so I had to kind of change stuff like that and do a couple of those things. But anyway, I tried to make it as uh, lively as possible in the book. And I do use you a lot, the second person, so that, uh, you know, to make it a little bit more personal. But anyway, so that's the grammar book. So now, uh, we reached Friday. This is uh, it's about 5 p.m. Friday afternoon. I am now ready to format. So that's why I decided to start with you guys, because I'm I'm ready. And you're probably like, well, get on with it. Jeez, quit talk. All the background information. OK, I, I get it. So the first thing you want to do, the first thing I did is I went up here to select all. And I selected the whole manuscript and I made sure that it was. The, the font I like, which is Garamond. Uh, I like Garamond because um, Garamond tends to be easy to read. A lot of books are done in Garamond. Uh, I, I hate Ke uh, Calibri. Is that what it's called? Calibri and Calibri Lite. I, I just don't like them at all. I don't like, uh, they look like this. Eh, it's okay, I guess. That's okay, I guess. I don't know. I'm just partial to, uh, uh, yeah, that's terrible. I'm just kind of partial to Garamond. 
<laughs> I don't know. But the reason why I do that too is not because of the, the, the fonts. The fonts are actually going to change when I when I format here in a moment. It's just I, I want them to all be one. I found that when I up upload the program I use, that if everything's the same font, the program has an easier time figuring things out and it doesn't mess everything up. Um, sometimes I couldn't even get to upload if I had like three, three or four different fonts in the manuscript. Uh, I would I would try to upload it to the the formatting program I use, and it wouldn't even load upload it at all. So I go in and I change everything to the same font, and it worked. So what I did is I took away all of any information, uh, my name, um, anything that's not part of the book, I removed because if you're going to upload it to a program to use for formatting. It's gonna it's gonna take all that stuff out or it's gonna be confused by that stuff anyway. So first thing I do is I make sure everything's the same font. I've already gone through the entire book and made sure that everything is the way I want it. Um, this is a nonfiction, so I didn't I'm not indenting paragraphs and everything was kind of blocky, but the formatting program will change that. So don't have you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then of course my answer key stuff. We'll make sure that some stuff is bolded and and things like that. So just you know, prepare prepare the uh, manuscript for upload. Now, I, I mentioned that there's three ways of, or four ways of, that I've used, because uh, there might be more than four, I'm just saying, four I used, that there's four ways of formatting. The first one was outsource it. The second one was what I just showed you with uh, Bethany Adizeta, is uh, you know the you can do it on, on Microsoft Word. And I used to do that a long time ago. And then came Vellum. Vellum is a program with a uh, MacBook. And at first it was okay and it didn't have a lot of choices and I didn't really like it that much. And then they add some more choices in they made like Vellum 3.0. And then I actually bought it. It's very expensive to, to get Vellum where you can format both print books and um, eBooks costs about $250. You do own it forever, but um, still it's 250 bucks. I did buy it way back when, and I went once I started Vellum Point 3.0 and had a lot more choices, and uh, I started liking it. And I, I did format a lot of my books in that because really there was no choice. There was a couple of things. There was Calibre, and there was a couple other things available in PC, but they weren't very good. And they were kind of old looking, and the the format looked really wonky. You know, like the uh, uh, interface and stuff was clunky, and I I don't know. It was it was a learning curve, and I didn't. Didn't feel like trying to learn all that, especially when I already knew how to do it in Word and stuff and, and it had Vellum. So uh, I mentioned I had Scrivener and I mentioned that I had Vellum. And then uh, Dave Chesson at uh, Kindle Panure, which he's the guy behind uh, Publisher Rocket, which is a great tool to use. Publisher Rocket costs like $90 or so, 90 something, 90 and some change. And it's an invaluable tool to find uh, um categories and stuff to put your work in and so I followed him quite a bit um just want to do a shout out to publishing with Dale because publishing with Dale um has taught me a lot as well about what to use in formatting and and, and things along those lines but um it, Kindle Panura came out about a it came out about a year ago they came out with a program called Atticus now Atticus was touted as being a marriage between Scrivener and Vellum. They put them together and kind of made one program out of it. And so it's a lot cheaper. It's about 150 bucks, 147, I think. And you own it forever. And, uh, you know, you don't have to use it. Um, so the four things that I've used is you can outsource, you can pay money. You can do it in Microsoft Word for free. You just have to watch Bethany Adizeta's <laughs> videos to kind of figure out how, because she, she goes into super, super detail. So, um, I, I don't feel bad about sending you there at all if that's what you want to do for free. And then if you want to buy one of the programs, you can buy Vellum for 250 bucks or you can buy for uh, it, but it's Mac only. I should have mentioned that Vellum is Mac only, or you could buy for PC, Mac, um, Chromebook. Uh, the um, Atticus is supposed to work on all of those pro programs on all those platforms. So if you have a PC like me, you learn on PC and you, I don't know Apple, but um, you really want something like Vellum on PC, Atticus. Atticus is what you need to get. So that's what we're going to be doing today. That's what I'm going to be formatting in today is Atticus. Now, if you want to know how to format Vellum, if you're here for that reason and you have a Mac, uh, there are a lot of 
uh, YouTube videos. You can just you can just Google because it's been out a long time. You can just Google uh, format my book in Vellum or how do you format in Vellum? And there's a, a plethora of uh, videos out there about that. But also before you leave, before you run and say, okay, well, I'm going to go, he's going to do Atticus. I'm going to go somewhere else. Atticus is the marriage between Vellum and uh, Scrivener. So a lot of the stuff you would do on Vellum, you do in Atticus as well. So it, you might get benefits from watching this, even if you're a Mac user and you want to do Vellum. Besides, um, Atticus is like half the price of them, unless you already have it. All right. So I've already looked at my, I've already got everything the way I want it to go here. I've already made sure it has the same format as far as um, the uh, font and stuff. So now I can go ahead and exit out of my program here, my um, Word. Okay. Hit the save button. Make sure you do that because it definitely wanted me to do that. All right. So next. You can see my messy desktop. Yes, I have a lot of icons. Yes, I somehow know what all of them do. <laughs> all right, but anyway, uh, there's my publisher rocket. Anyway, you hit Atticus. Atticus is the cute little puppy thing here. Uh, I'm going to move it down here because I don't know why it moved up there, but Atticus is the little puppy with glasses, blue dog. So you hit that, and then boom. Here we go. There's some of my books I've already formatted. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to upload so I'm going to hit that and I'm going to upload in my book. I always put it as an edit file. Um, let's see, desktop. And it is my grammar. Let me find it here. I told you I know how to look at my stuff and then I don't, right? All right. So, okay, where'd it go? All right. So now I've forgotten what I've called it. Uh, you might have seen it go by. Let me look at what I call it. Uh, parts of speech. That's why I was looking for grammar. I call it parts of speech. Okay. So make sure you understand what you've, <laughs> you've labeled it as. Parts of speech. There it is. Grammar file. Okay. So it's going to put it right there. So the title of this is Grammar. And it's more. Okay. I'm going to capitalize these. It's more fun. Then watching paint dry. Yes, that's the title. Grammar. It's more fun than watching paint dry. Uh, there's gonna be me. Now I'm gonna I am gonna put in the uh front pages, I am gonna put that it's Mark Tyson writing as Cleve Bourbon because I want to put my credentials and Cleve Bourbon has no credentials, but Mark Tyson has a BA and an MA in English. So I definitely want to put that on this nonfiction book. Uh project name. Uh, I could probably put grammar or something, but there's not really a big deal. With my um, series books, I do go ahead and put a project name so I'll know what it belongs to. And the reason why I do this is because if you make a a, a um, custom uh, book and you want them all to look the same, like all my like my uh, War of the Oracle books all look the same, all my trying first trying books all look the same. Inside, when you open them, uh, I want them to I'll be the same. So I want to be able to click on that and make them look exactly the same. Right. So, but this grammar book is a one-off, so I don't have to worry about that too much. It's not going to, I don't think I'm going to format other stuff with this particular one. So here we go. So one of the things is when you were, when we were working in word earlier, uh, one thing I didn't mention is uh, when you are preparing your word manuscript, make sure that your headers um, that you use, well, Hang on, let me show you. I, don't, I can't believe I forgot this part. This is an important part. It's it's too important for me just to tell you. I, I need to show you. So let me pull back up my uh, my word again. All right, we'll look at that real quick again. Okay, so I use, um, on my Word uh, program, I use the view and I use um, navigation page so I can see all of the articles. But the reason why those are all where I can see them is because if you click on that, my uh, style heading, I, I set that. And I set it for, uh, mod you can right-click it and modify it. And I set it for Garamond. I set for 20 point. Okay. And the reason why I did that is because Atticus, and I go through each one of these and make sure that they're they're in that heading. And the reason I do that is because programs like Atticus and Vellum, um, they will be able to separate your chapters out by, by seeing that. So if you have all these uh, headers, 
with your heading one and you format it that way and throughout the whole uh the whole book then when you go right re- get ready to upload it to vellum or atticus that's how it's going to see and then separate your chapters out for you okay so like i said that was important to show you so i want to want to go ahead and show you that now let's go back to uh my uh atticus all right so so far as i know i've seen uh, videos where they have atticus in um uh, dark mode, but I don't know how to do it. So if you're like me and you love dark mode and you want this in dark mode, I'm not even sure if it does dark mode or not. And this is not an Atticus, you know, um, video. This is a formatting video. So uh, it just happens to be in Atticus. So I, I'm probably not going to go over all of the uh, features of Atticus. Like, but if you do want to, it, it automatically saves in the cloud and things like that, which I don't know if Vellum does that or not, but it automatically saves everything for you in the cloud and you can either use it with your browser or you can come over here to this little um, icon here and you can download the app, install the app and use it off the app. There's some disadvantages and advantages to doing it off the app and there's some advantages and disadvantages to doing it on uh, the browser. I don't, you know, if you want to find all those, you can, you can type in uh, Atticus in uh, YouTube and they have a whole channel of explaining all this stuff. So they'll go over all the features and details and everything of Atticus if you want to know how this thing works. Right now, we're just going to, I'm just showing you how I format my book or books. Uh, this is the same way I do with uh, my um, non fiction, my fiction. My, this is a non fiction. It's the same as I do with my fiction. All right. This one right here is the backup content. So it, and it saves it to your computer. So it backs up to the cloud automatically after every little bit of keystrokes or whatever but if you're worried about it you can always hit this and make sure you back up your content and it's those kind of things all right so here's my introduction now this program is designed to be like scrivener where you can actually write in atticus so you could actually instead of using microsoft word or or you know pages or google docs or whatever you could actually write in this program that's another advantage of it uh, you can write in Vellum too, but this is designed to be like um, to be like Scrivener, so that you can actually do that. You have the writing tab, you have the formatting tab here. Okay, and the home tab just takes you back to uh, all your books, like this. I'll show you. See, there's the book that we're doing now. All right. So the first thing you do, uh, first thing I do, is I go up to the front matter because this is where I was talking about earlier that you might need a journal. Like, I mean, well, you don't need a journal. You need a piece of paper. If you do it on, like, a piece of paper or whatever, or something you can keep by. I just happen to have bullet journals. And I write down whatever I'm putting in the front matter in my bullet journal in, in order. And the reason why I do that is because if you're writing a, a series like I do, not, not particularly this book, but I want them all to be the same. So I want the title page. I usually have uh, the front matter will be, like, the title page and then the copyright. And then I, I put maps in my fantasy novels. I want the maps to be in the same spot in, in all the fantasy novels. And so I do that all, all the same. So I write down what order it is in because there's like in my fantasy novels, there's like five or six front matter things here. So I want to be all, all to be in the same order so that they're all the same. And when they open the book, uh, whether it's on print or, or, you know, ebook or whatever. So the first thing you do, first thing I do is uh, go to the title page you go up here to this little black button, edit book details. And this is where I put in my cover, which you're about to see the cover for the first time anywhere. No one's seen this cover but me. So grammar book cover, here we go. It is my, boom. It might be a little hard to see, you know, thumbnail kind of, but it's, I like it. Uh, because the, it's the name grammar, it's more fun than watching paint dry. I put like a wall with some splotches of paint on it. And the back is like a big, splotch of black and and the spine is like that too but anyway so i just wanted to be colorful and i wanted to kind of stand out so that's the way i did it so it's more fun than watching paint dry and then my uh subtitle is this is the whoops last grammar book you will ever need. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't need the period there. 
Um, you might think that's a little bit of a bold statement. This is the last grand book you'll ever need, but really I put everything in there you need to write. You need to be able to be a good writer, um, whether you're doing essays or you're writing books or you're you know, doing some academic writing. Uh, I don't think that there's anything, there, there might be some more advanced grammar that I didn't put in the book, but the likelihood of you using it in everyday writing or, or write, novel writing or essay writing is probably pretty low because everything else I put in there. So everything that you've seen in my videos I've, I've put in this book. So anyway, next one, uh, it's going to do it. I don't have a custom table of contents. I'm going to let it do it. All right. Author is me. Project, like, we don't need to do that. Uh, I'm going to put in first edition because it is the first edition. You guys are seeing it for the first time here. Language is English. 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 Where is it? English. There we go. All right. And I don't have the print or the that stuff. I won't put that in until probably um, ADP or something. And then my publisher logo, I've got it right here. Just have it handy. Uh, I don't know exactly where it's at. See, I told you I knew stuff. Uh, where my stuff is, kind of. Okay, and then uh, my publisher's name. And then I just go ahead and put my publisher link, which is my Cleve Bourbon uh, website, web page, which is still not finished. So if you go there and you, you scroll down past all the books and it looks like gobbledygook, it's like, if now this got this guy at the bottom because I haven't finished it yet. Um, I still need to do that. That's one of the things, you know, I put everything on the top like that you need and, and it clicks to all my social media. And then you scroll down, it has all my books. It doesn't have my new uh, Heroine Path on it yet, but um, cover yet. Then you scroll down and then when you get past the books, it's it's like the uh, the general matter that comes with that comes with the, the program I used for my website. So I really got to change that. But anyway... So if you go there, it's it's still under construction. So here's where it freaks me out a little bit. This this formatting program etiquette that freaks me out a little bit is because I want to I want to hit a save button here, and you can if you want, but it's already saved in the, in there. I've, I've tested this out. It's already got all that, all that stuff saved. So now I can just uh, simply go back to whatever. I can hit formatting or whatever. I can. Uh, it's already in there. So the copyright, what I do is I go back to the home and I just pick one of my books and I go to the copyright because all my copyrights are the same, except I'm going to change the second edition thing there. And I just copy it. And then see, you can see where my, my matter, my front matter, you know, just looks different here for my uh, fantasy. I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. See, there's my, what I was talking about, that's the same font that my cover's in. I learned that from uh, Bethany Adazeda. And then uh, my copyright and then my title page, which is a uh, one I just showed you in the other on the other book, which will come out. It'll show the publishing information and stuff. Then I have my map right, my well, map left, and then map right. And I want them to be the same in every book. And then it, then it has my table of contents. All right. Whoops. Don't do that. All right. So let's go back to the grammar book. All right, so I'm in my I'm in the front matter. I'm in copyright, so I just kind of just take this and I just slam in my other one, and then of course I change this to grammar. It's more okay. Thank you. I want to capitalize these more fun than watching paint. Dry. Yeah, it really is. It really is more fun than watching paint dry. All right. Uh, copyright's good. All oh, that's good. No, no, this blah, blah, blah. It's good. Now, what I do want to change, it's going to be in April 2023, but I need to put back in the one again, and I need to change this to first edition. And the reason why is because this is the old style. I just like this. Uh, I learned this from Bethany Ada Zeta, too. You, know, you might think I have a crush on her or something. She's married, so... I wouldn't have a crush on her anyway, even though she is pretty and I do like her and I like her style. The reason why I like her is because she's all soft spoken and everything. And it's just very, you know, it's it's uh, like ASMR. I, I have a cup of coffee. I put her on and I listen to her and it just is comforting. It's like listening to, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know how to explain it. 
it's not really a crush. It's more like, oh, I'm in my happy place. I can listen to her and and learn and and whatever, whatnot. Okay, so no crush. She is married. So stop it. Stop it right now. All right. But yeah, I do love, use a lot of her stuff on her from her, her uh site because I do like her. I also like uh Courtney from uh Courtney um uh, not 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 my editor Courtney, but Courtney uh the Courtney Project. I can't remember her last name. She writes under the pen names of uh, Lyra Parrish and um she's a romance novelist. She and she partners with another romance novelist. And she writes under uh, Kennedy, Kennedy something. Anyway, I'm sorry. I don't, anyway, I like her too. So I listen to hers as well. So anyway, first edition, put that back. She taught me this. This is the old school way. What this means is when you have like one through 10, this is like in the old school, when you have like, it's when you traditional publish, they would put this in. Like if it's the first edition, you have a one there. When you do the second edition, the one's removed and the, it'll say second edition here. And if it's a third edition, the one and two is removed, and you have the third edition, and so on. And that's what that's for. That's what that little countdown thing is for. So I like that in there, uh, but I wanted to change that because this is a first edition. Then, of course, my uh, table of contents, I like to go in here and make sure that they're all the same. All right. Um, and they do look, see, it's it put in a bunch of other chapters in there. So that do not belong for some reason. And the reason why I did that, I think, is because in my answer key, um, I have the chapter names and it's confused and it thinks that, oh, those are chapter names. And so it probably put those as chapters and it did. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to probably copy all these and paste them into chapter 25. So to make them all fit, I'll probably have to go in and do all that. So I'm not going to make you guys watch me do that. What I'll have to do is I'll have to, uh, like I said, I'll have to go 26 and I'll have to copy all these down and it, it probably messed up my uh counts here because this looks like i don't really have i don't think five questions i think it's 10 so it probably messed up my count so i'll probably have to go through here like this this is chapter 26 and i will copy it and then i'll go to chapter 25 and i guess it does have five in that particular um chapter and then i'll have to do that and then i'll have to fix all this like, why is there a bullet point there? Get rid of the bullet point. And, okay, so I'll have to do that for every chapter. And then, of course, now I can get rid of chapter 26. Delete that. And then it'll it'll change this numbering and everything. But anyway, I'm going to have to go through that. And I won't, I won't make you guys watch that. So, but that is a problem with it. It is confused. I just confused it. Confused it. Because uh, you have a chapter there and then it kind of added. But anyway, so I'm going to have to go back through and change all that. But everything else looks good. I'll go ahead and look at everything else. I'm probably going to end this video here pretty soon because we're coming up on 30 minutes. So we'll, we'll do a part two. And I, I probably won't make you wait a week to do part two. I'll probably start part two um, and have it out sometime in the beginning of next week. Tuesday or Wednesday. Probably Wednesday. Wednesday is usually a good day for me to come out. So I'll probably have part two out Wednesday for you. But um this will get you started. And I know I did a lot of talking about stuff before I actually got started on this. So you're probably like, well, you didn't get very far into formatting. But um, I'm probably going to do a couple more things here before we go. But the reason why is because I, I have to do all that. And I have, it takes a little bit of time. All right. So the other things I want to show you real quick before we go, uh, for, before I uh, end this video, is uh, we'll just move past that. I'll just do that off camera. Um is when you compare to the formatting, that's what I wanted to talk about next is the actual formatting. I want to do this before we before we take off. So uh, I've already got set up. You've got Atticus themes. Now, just to let you know, I have, as I said, I have Vellum and I have Atticus. Uh, Atticus has a lot more choices on uh, these formatting right now than Vellum does. Um, and they're probably adding more and Vellum's adding more. So really they're kind of in competition with each other, but they're, you know, it, it doesn't matter which one you use. You, you, you can do whatever. I, I usually custom make a custom uh, theme anyway. So that's what like right here, these are my uh, custom themes for my books that you've seen. And like I said, when uh, the reason why I put down the project name, because if you can see here, there's the, the trying project. I put two eyes there. Uh, there's my word of the Oracle. And then there's my tournament of mages. So every tournament mage books I, I do, like when I get ready to format Green Mage Metamorphosis, I'll use this one. 
and it'll it'll change it the way I want it. And when I use uh, if I when I write the next War of the Oracle, it'll be that one. And then first trying now, you can't really see it on this, but the reason why is because there's drop caps and there's there's pictures of dragons and things like that that I have in each one of those. So anyway, for this book, I'm probably gonna use an Atticus theme. Now, if you look at these Atticus themes, a lot of these are going to be like might be romance or something along those lines. Um, so on the second page here, and there's three pages. Well, there's only one on the third page, but uh, I like this one, this Finch, because it looks very much like a textbook or like a, a, a nonfiction book to me. Now, if you notice, I've got introduction says one, chapter one, and uh, it says introduction. I don't, I don't want that. So these little three little lines here on Atticus, you click on that. I'm going to convert this to introduction. Okay, now that changes that to introduction and it makes my chapter one, chapter one now. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to do. Second thing is, and I've already changed this one, but um, oh my, no, I didn't change it yet. On chapters, if you notice, it says chapter one because it's formatted that way. And then of course, when it imported my Microsoft Word file, it brought in my chapter one, which I had in there. So we don't want chapter one, chapter one. So I'm going to change that. I do like uh, that it, it, you know, you can change it different. You can have like one, you can have chapter one up there. You can have one like that. Uh, for this book, I, I do like the, the, it's spelled out because it's a grammar book. So it's spelled out. So uh, since it's a nonfiction, I don't really need the drop cap. So it's very simple. All I have to do is scroll down here and Unclick drop cap. See, now there's no drop cap. I don't think I have any ornamental breaks in this book or anything like that, uh, but you can put your own. You can even create your own with book, book, book brush. All right. Um, PDF changes, um, EPUB changes, all that kind of stuff. You can it'll show your layout here. It'll show you the size of the book, which might be five, five by eight. And then, of course, there's some advanced stuff. If you want to do like specific margins and things like that, you can hit the advanced settings. And it will, uh, it'll do specific margins and font sizes and stuff like that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the the one they give me. Uh, I don't really care much for these fonts, but they're not bad. We'll see how it looks. Some of the stuff looks kind of weird. Like right here, it looks like I have a normal paragraph and then it spreads out my words here for some reason. So I'll have to look at that to make sure that that all fits better. All right. So how do I take off the chapter one? Well, that's very easy. I go into up here to writing because we're in formatting now. Go to writing, and then I just take off that that chapter one that I had in there. And now you can go back to formatting. Voila, it's gone. It just says chapter one sentence types. So I'm going to have to do that for each chapter as well. This is why it takes a while to format. I'm going to have to go in there, and I'm going to have to remove all those. Now you can do this um, in your Microsoft Word file. Before you upload, I don't because I'm scared. <laughs> Just to put it brief, to put it bluntly, I'm scared that I've had that happen before. When I was uploading Black Mage, um, Cursed, when I was loading, uploading that book, uh, it the chapters were everywhere. The, the it was not it was not pretty. I had to go in in this program and change everything. It it took me hours, and so I get scared that it's going to happen again. So I go ahead and I upload it with the chapter titles. Just because I'm scared that if I don't, that it's not going to upload it correctly and I'm going to have to spend extra hours doing that. Now, again, I'm going to do this off camera. So I'm just going to, I'm just showing you right now. But as you can see, every time I do that, it takes off the uh, the chapter heading, the, the chapter four thing here. And I'm going to have to do that with all of them as well. So I've got a couple of, got a couple of things I got to do in here for that. Now, real quick, uh, I showed you the front matter up here. Now I'm going to show you the back matter. Now the back matter has nothing in it. If you click on the button, there's nothing in there. So this little black button down here with three little dots, that's where you're going to add stuff in. So uh, let's see for, I might put an about author in there. Let's see. I'll probably put um, maybe an afterward in there. And I want the afterward to go in front of about author. So I can do that. You can do that in vellum as well. You can move stuff around like that. It looks basically the same over here on, in Vellum that it does in Atticus, to be honest. And by adding stuff in like this, this is the same way you do it in Vellum uh, as well. 
And so maybe some acknowledgments also by. I'm definitely gonna put also by. All right. I'll probably put that, I'll probably put that before about author. And uh there might be something else. I'll, I'll look at it later. But anyway, I just want to show you you can do that. And so when you get to go back up to writing. Okay, my uh there it goes. I'm writing now. If you see also by, I can add those in. And what I do is I go to my books. I already have a page where I have also by, so I can just jump up here and go to my like black mage or whatever. See, this is why I put everything the same, and this is why I put everything uh, like I said in my bullet journal, so that I can just do this. I can come in here and I go, okay, here's all my books. I can just copy it. Now, I should mention that Atticus suggest that you don't copy and paste outside of the program, but I don't think there's a problem with actually copy and pasting inside the program. So once you're working the program, I've never had a problem with it doing it. So once I'm working in the pro in the program, I tend not to have any uh, issues with it, with um, copy and pasting, but they don't want you to copy and paste like your whole Microsoft Word document and then copy and paste it in here. They don't want you to do that. It, it messes up your formatting. You, they want you to upload it like I showed you earlier. They don't. So, but in, inside the program here, going to home and looking at my other books and doing something like this, uh, it doesn't seem to have, a, I've never had a problem with it. It's always done it perfectly and never had a, never had a hitch with it at all. So um, inside the program, I think you're fine to copy and paste everything because I do all the time. Okay, I'll probably do it about author. I don't think I have one of my other books. I need to put one in there. The afterward, I'm probably going to write later. So, okay, I'm at the point now where I need to go and do all the other stuff that I want to do off camera that's tedious that you don't really want to sit here and watch me do. Like, I have to go and fix uh, my uh, answer key chapter for all my exercises because it, it didn't understand that those chapter titles in that in that chapter were not actual chapters. Right. And then uh, I've got to go in and, and take the uh, chapter four and all that stuff off of each one of these so that it will format correctly, like chapter three nouns. Now, you can also uh, in this theme, when you scroll down here, if you want. Um, so, yeah, I, I went ahead and kept Garamond um, somewhere down here. I thought maybe it's under writing. No, nope. somewhere you can. You can move, make it where it moves all the stuff to the middle. Um, it's under here somewhere. I'm probably just missing it. All right, here it is. You can center all that. Um, it's right there. So if you want centered, which I probably, I don't know. I kind of like left. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll decide on that. I might do left or I might do middle. I kind of like middle too, though. Middle is like symmetrical. Left is like full too. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure that one out off camera as well. See, these are the decisions you have to make when you format. Now, uh, so I have to do all the other stuff. And what I'll do is I'll start the second video once I come back in and all that stuff is done. And then we'll talk about how to uh, put in pretty stuff in your in your program, in your... Uh, <sighs> can't talk. Put pretty stuff in on your pages. Like if you want, like over here, I don't know if you can see it on, on your side or not, but there's like some little flowery stuff on this one. It's pretty easy to do in, in this. It was harder for me to do it in Vellum, to be honest, than it is with Atticus. Atticus was real easy to put things in on the uh, titles, over the titles, where in Vellum I had to do some kind of janky maneuvering a little bit. But um, there's videos on how to do that, too. That's how I found out how to do it. I went on to YouTube and looked up Vellum. But anyway, so I'm going to start off next time. I'm going to go ahead and do all this stuff and get all of this uh Fixed. You, you know what I have to do? I showed you. I have to go in here and I have to, uh, under the writing tab, I have to go in here and I have to copy and paste these into the chapter 23 where they belong. And then I have to go and fix all these chapter names. Um, and I promise I won't do anything else until I come back in with the next video. Uh, I might come out with it earlier because I probably will just go ahead and move on to the next part right now and, and then just upload the video in a day or two. Maybe, maybe I'll upload it Sunday instead of Wednesday. Maybe I'll put part two on Sunday. But anyway, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and and it's this already saved. See, it bothers me because I'm, I'm thinking it needs to be saved.
it's already saved. I can stop sharing now. <laughs> but like I said, it kind of scares me a little bit because I, I want to push that button. Uh, but I found that it, it's not needed. It does save it. And But if you want extra um, peace of mind, you can do it, do it yourself. Okay, so I'm going to come out with the next video here in a day or two. Maybe I'll do it uh, in a couple of days from now. And then um, I'll show you the book, the completed book. And um, I'll probably go over it one more time, and then I'll probably go ahead and publish it. So if you, those of you who are, are lacking my videos on parts of speech, on my grammar videos, if you want a companion book that goes along with all the videos that has the same information in it, then definitely pick up this book um, because it will be uh, available for – It'll be available in print and in ebook shortly. It's not available yet, of course. I'm formatting it right now, but it'll be out in a few days. So anyway, I will see you in the next video. Thank you guys, and I will see you then. Bye.